Welcome to another edition of Premium Quality Coffee Talk with Lanny D. Hey guys, we're here from the Maryland State Library for the Blind and Physically Handicapped and we are about to go on a one-of-a-kind tour of this amazing facility. We're going to be starting from the basement and working our way up. Can't wait! Can't and, wait! Uh, we, can't, we, can't, we can't wait to show you this uh, amazing facility. We'll see you on the other side. Take oh. care. All right, man. Down here, we have um, about 70,000 of the 105,000 titles. If you like an author, like you like James Patterson, and you've read everything that we have available at the moment, um, we can sit down and work with you to find another author you're going to like. This is a very personal thing for us. We take it very seriously, this whole reader's advisory thing. Um, Just got finished prep with that. Yeah, <laughs> you got you to finish a good book then. Yeah. Um, and and we'll, we'll go, we will work to find you the books that you're interested in. So, um, so what you're seeing right now is that uh, we are pulling some of our older books that we have and making sure that our sound, our recordings are available, that they have good sound quality and they meet standards. So this is the process for Maryland, and um, every state may or may not have a recording studio, and if they do, they all have to follow the same set of standards in order to have it placed on our recording download service. So what will happen is we'll have two volunteers working at the same time. One will be in the recording studio reading this copy. Oh, okay. Okay, this copy of the book. They'll be inside this booth. The other volunteer is going to sit outside and follow along. And they're going to make little notes every time the person sneezes, coughs, stumbles over a word, has to re-say the sentence, or what have you. And they work together. They do that for about an hour. The first eight months is volunteer narrators reading. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, it takes um, a good three months to do what's called the markups, which is the chapter breaks. The, um, wait a minute, I'm, wait a minute, I'm going to get a hand not only to y'all, but to the uh, volunteers that yes. they're reading. <laughs> I think you'd be good with a mic. You know, I just saying, we're always looking for volunteers. <laughs> just throwing that out there. I feel so humble, you know, because it's just so much. I mean, it just, and, you know, they help the low vision, helping the people, helping everyone, really. We actually have um, volunteers and staff members who come and take books that are requested by patrons that we don't have locally. Like, for instance, let's say that you're requesting the latest James Patterson. Okay. And we just, we just don't have a copy available because they're all checked out. Right. So we will go and make a copy. We will download it from our the BARD service, the digital download. Okay. We will download it to a cartridge, um, which I'm sure you, you know, you're already familiar with. Um, so we will take it, a cartridge, plug it into the computer, and we will um, put the book right here. Then we put a label on it, a braille overlay for those who may need it, put it in a gray case. We have a specialized case for that, and off it goes. It takes about four to, uh, four to six weeks, sometimes on the outside, uh, eight weeks, kind of depending, um, simply because we have over, at the moment, over 300 requests going. So somebody can request, uh, like, if I, I don't know, whatever, looking for a book by, I don't know, Mom, Gay, whoever, whatever. Yeah, if, if it's been recorded by the National Library Service and we don't have a copy in-house to send, you can get it. we can get it. Okay. All right, so we are in our technical services area. Between the three of them, um, they, have, they have really, uh, we, we have patrons who live and die by what they do, mm -hmm. so it's amazing. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we do inspect all of our materials coming in back from patrons to make sure that the books are in, in usable condition. Okay. Um, sometimes what happens is, you know, just like with any other piece of technology, there's a hiccup somewhere along the line and the book will stop reading. So this is our standard player. Um, and what's neat about our standard players. But it's one I right? <laughs> yep. Um, what I what I love is I get people who go I can't stand audio I don't like the I don't like the sound of her voice not a problem let's tone it down <laughs> yeah let's speed up the voice or slow it down What happens if we, because when we pull the book, we check it, we make mm -hmm. sure it's still, it's good, we make sure it's in the right case, and then we hand it to them when, if they come in and collect it. Right. We do the same thing that when we send it out in the mail. We individually check each one. Sometimes we miss something, mm -hmm. oh, but yeah. most of the time we check them, and, and, I mean, we check them and make sure. When, if, if our patrons were to come back here and try to do that on their own, not only would they be frustrated and lost, they may end up with a book they weren't intending. This is our, um, our patron area. Fabulous area. Um, so this is primarily where our patrons come. We have brailers, uh, manual brailers for patrons if they choose. We actually have a computer lab um, where they can come in and get instructions. If, you know, if you're someone who is learning how to use email uh, um, and you're visually impaired, how do you get the computer to do what you want it to do? And um, I spent I spent a day with him, and then I went home and tried it with a blindfold just to see. Mm -hmm. And it really does take practice and practice and practice. And he he is the perfect person because he's so patient um, and, and so willing to sit. And you get an hour at a time because he's like, after that, your brain just kind of... Mm -hmm. We have a special program so that, for instance, if I wanted to write something up in Word and come down, I can convert it into Braille. Okay. Um, if a patron comes in and they're using the computer and they are completely sightless, they have the ability to print it in Braille if that's their chosen medium. Typically, a large print book is anything that's over size 14. There is no industry standard. <laughs> <laughs> Pull one out. Keep pulling oh, out. Sure. Actually, yeah, and let's look at it. Um, so, this book, this one here. That's an oversized. No, this is this is considered large print. And oh, okay. For, and for some, this is not large print. No, for me, it wouldn't be. Large print. <laughs> Um, for me, this is large print. Yeah, right. And it is. I mean, you can see some things, but I mean, my, my eyes is just... Yeah. We're able to um, go up and actually feel dwellings. This was installed with the building. And a lot of times, you know, kids, especially young kids, we use this as a chance to kind of encourage young people who are losing their sight um, or, you know, to, to embrace the arts and, and do different things, which is really nice. Well, you kind of encourage me because I... I don't draw that much, but I, that gives me something that, because I always have, I have imagination. That's, uh -huh. And that's what helped me with, deal with this um, blindness, too, because I always could imagine stuff. Um, you know, if I'm talking to somebody, I could see myself riding a horse or see myself doing that. I don't have an imagination yeah. of any kind. So I, I have them draw it out for me. Um, but it's really nice to come here and see that someone who has lost their vision is continuing to do what they love. 100 of the 190 branch libraries across the state have one of these. Mm -hmm. um, the way, what makes it ADA compliant isn't just the computer with screen reading software. It also, we have a, um, a clear view with speech, so you can put documents underneath here, it'll read it to you. Um, you can adjust contrast, things like that. This wall right here is actually our tactile wall, and this is, Currently, the buttons do not work, but, <gasps> but if you press the button, the cow moves. So put your hand on the cow, it's, it's, it feels like a cow. Yeah. Oh, I, I heard a small moo. I heard a small moo. Yeah, it's still there. It's hey, easy. I'm raised up on a dirt so I didn't know about these cats. Yeah, so this, <laughs> this was installed in 1992 when the building opened. So they have been well loved. Children can come down here and they can learn Braille. Um, one of the best teaching tools for the for this is so Braille is six cells. Um, it gives me a chance to know, okay, that's A, this is B. Where's B? B is two bumps. Oh, okay, okay. Which is really neat.
this side of the page oh. each year. Okay, so it's the same. Okay, uh -huh. right. It, it describes the pictures to, mm -hmm. to the kids uh, or to the, or if the parent is blind and they want to read along with their children, they can do that. Isn't that nifty? This is great, yep. And um, our friends group actually continuously updates this collection once a year. So we do get a lot of the more recent books, but um, you know, dual vision books are expensive. So what we've done is we know that not everybody can get one of these. Right. But the National Library Service said, you know, there's people who have um, limited vision, who have mobility, um, who are blind and need braille, so there's braille overlay on the top of the buttons. It gives them a chance mm -hmm. to, um, uh, to get <laughs> additional functions. Like if you wanted to uh, uh, listen to a magazine that had multiple books on it, Hit the big green button. Yes, Ross. With the advice and consent of the Senate and serve for life. Whereas the executive reflects the political will of She's the majority. She's so boring. Oh my God. Let's give her some coffee. Hit speed up. Wait, wait, yeah. Let's give her some coffee. This must be right. No, that's fast forward. That's speed. I think you're right here. Yep. Yeah, so speed her up. Keep going. It thus comes. Keep her going. Keep her going. Give her some coffee. The executive and the Supreme Court going? have intersected, Go and work. overlapped, and even Well, you, you got to press it. Okay, keep pressing. The story is told that William Howard Taft once by himself stranded that was <laughs> But it also gives you extra functionality um, so that you can hit your sleep button from anywhere. You can add a bookmark to the book that I want to go back and listen to that that chapter again. I'm going to keep reading, but I want to mark that chapter. Okay. So you can navigate via bookmark. You can um, adjust uh, tone. So if you get someone who's high pitched, you can like me. You just drop them down. Um, if you wanted to, I can bookmark on mine. What did what you, you can you on the standard one yeah. without the remote? You cannot bookmark. Okay. Um, but with the advanced player, you can. Okay. Um, what's also really neat is that we'll have patrons who get who will, who have cartridges like this because you can buy blank ones for like ten dollars, and they download from the library's digital download service five or six books at a time. Oh, okay. And they put it in here, and this gives them the ability to bounce between books on one cartridge. What name is this? This is our meeting room. Meeting room. Okay. Um, so it's our hope that we're going to be holding more events here. Right. Um, you know, not just teleconferences, but we're going to have people come in and speak, and then we'll be able to webcast these out. Oh, yeah, okay. That's um, but to do that, Miss Leslie, our director, and Mr. John, our assistant director, worked really hard to get funding to completely revamp this meeting room and make it completely accessible to the visually impaired. Right. This yeah. screen, I if I, I can have all screens doing different things, but I can also make sure that the, if I'm showing anything on the screen, that it's large enough so that it can be seen. Because even, so that. if someone who is completely blind, we, we make sure that that's accommodated through voiceovers and through explaining. Mm -hmm. Like we did Braille Bingo, and we had have, we have patrons who were completely blind. Okay. But I still had a screen going on in the background for those who weren't okay. completely blind, and, they were, and we set it up, we did accessible, um, we did it in an accessible format with the right colors and making sure that they could um, they could do that. Um, because obviously, you know, it, it affected you know your lifestyle. Well, yeah, because they, I think I got I said, oh Lord, first time they were driving. I have a motorcycle, right? You know, I love a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. right? That was my that was my really way to train. And, uh,